Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Salvador Banderas. I came from FUNEVER, which is a university network. Uh, I'm the head of educational technology and translation, but as probably many of you, I have been in every role in Moodle. So I've been a developer, I've been an instructional designer, a teacher, an administrator, everything. Um, so I'm really glad that you're here to, uh, today. I sure wasn't expecting this many people, so excuse my trembling. Um, and well, I'm going to talk to you about uh, gamification. So uh, um, I hope all of you know what gamification is. I, I hope so, because this is a technical presentation, so OK. Um, but just for the sake of the conversation, does anyone not know what gamification is? Well, perfect. I'm going to explain it either way. <laughs> so, uh, as you know, you all know, gamification is the application of uh, uh, elements from the game playing into non-recreative fields, like, I don't know, marketing, uh, others, education. So, in the case of education, at least, it's not new. I mean, uh, learning by playing, it's something that has been done, like, forever like the dawn of existence, so uh, it's not new, gamification. So the, the, the question is, why now? Why so much fuss about it now? Because if you look at the trends in, in education, year after year, gamification is there among other buzzwords like, I don't know, artificial intelligence, uh, micro-learning, uh, whatever comes to mind, uh, extended reality, for example. So, so why gamification keeps on um, keeps on appearing year after year in, in trends? Well, mainly, I think it's because it's proven to be a really effective way of engaging, of engaging users in the, in the learning processes, but also because nowadays there's a rising need to boost disengagement, disengagement for both learners and teachers, uh, not just in the learning process itself, but also, but also in, the, in the environment where it happens. And in, in our case, it's the, the virtual platform, it's Moodle. Um, I think this may be related to, to the um, uh, consumption habits of, of the younger generations, but also uh, to, the, to the situation that we have been living lately. Um, going forcefully to, from face-to-face -face education to virtual education, uh, has been hard for so many uh, institutions. So they're looking for any way of engaging the users in the use of the platform. So gamification is one of the best ones. So, okay. Okay, Moodle being the best LMS out there, as you know, um, already has some gamif uh, gamification uh, uh, alternatives. There's a number of plugins in the in the plugin database that were wonderful and that and that uh, give some gamification experience to the to the model platform. I personally have been a fan of Level Up and Stash since I've discovered them in a previous model mood. They they are they are really nice. The others too, but I mean I'm, I'm a fan of these two. But when you look at out of the box uh, out of the box model. Um, you see that if you don't install any additional plugins, there's not much about gamification. In fact, the only real gamification that, that I can think of uh, feature is the badges feature, uh, and to some extent, some of the capabilities that the H5P uh, content creation allows. Well, and also any way that you as teachers or developers or technologies can think of by using other type of plugins or components that are not necessarily meant for gamification. So, seeing this lack of gamification features in, in core, I thought, okay, why not create a core gamification subsystem? And that's why we're here today, okay? So, um, if you see on screen, there's a number of words, of terms, that in this case uh, belong to the uh, to the world of role playing role playing video games. Uh, most of them are shared 
or, or may, may, you may have heard that not in video games, but in education itself, when talking about gamification. Uh, so you can see, I don't know, points, leaderboards, levels, quests, skills, inventory. So, man, there's, there's, this is typical from video games, but uh, I'm pretty sure you have been uh, listening to, uh, hearing them when talking about gamification sometime. But, okay, so we're trying to create a subsystem. So a subsystem needs to be something simple, something that can be implemented by any other developer, that can be extended, that can apply to multiple scenarios or context. So we, we can just uh, make all of this to happen in the subsystem. So we need to find the common ground for gamification to, uh, to happen. Okay, remember this is my approach, it's not a, the approach. So uh, this is what, what I think we can do. So let's try and find which of these terms could be a minimum, uh, not the lowest common denominator for the, for the subsystem. Anyone has any guess about which term I have chosen among all of those to, to, to be the, the, the um, essence of the gamification subsystem? Points, yeah. <laughs> points, yeah. I mean, we wanted to keep it simple, so points is everywhere. I mean, if you look at card games, for example, like, uh, I don't know, Remigio, the card game Remigio, you need a certain number of points to, to show your deck. If you look at the sport, group sports especially, you need to score points. And if you look at, at video games, for example, you have arcade games, which the goal is to, to get the number, the most, the maximum number of points, or other genres of video games where you need to get experience points, ability points, so, so points. Yeah, why not? Okay, so having points in mind, what will be the basics for the subsystem? So what, sh what should the, the subsystem allow? The sh the, it, it, well, it will allow obtaining points. Where? Within an active game instance. I will talk about that in a bit, but just so you know, like, like the press, start to start a new game, that kind of game, so, so game instance. Who? Of course, the player, but we don't have players in Moodle, we have users, so users with search capabilities. When or how, if you prefer, is how you get points, when you get the points. Um, for example, when carrying out certain actions, we'll see about it later. And why? Well, I as a developer actually don't care much, don't get me wrong, but that's up to the, to the interested users, to the teachers, to the pedagogues. Uh, how they use the subsystem is up to them, actually, so I don't have an answer for the why. So before we, we go on, uh, as I said, this is an approach, it's not the approach, it's the approach I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm proposing. Um, a very main th that I'm not talking about an existing plugin, not something that is in production. Um, again, it's an approach that I have made up and that I want to show you by using existing model components and features. Uh, and, even though, and even though there are some prototypes that I plan on make available in the near future, they were developed with, as a proof of concept, so they are, not, they, are, they are really far from ready to be in a, in a production setting, so if you ever get to them in my GitHub or something, please don't use them in your production settings. Okay, so with that said, let's start we said the what, with the where, the game instance. So, the game instance is where the game happens, okay? Where do we want the game to happen? So, the most common uh, context in Moodle where the uh, action happens, let's say action, are three contexts. is the system context for the whole site, the course category setting, a uh, context, sorry, which contains a number of courses, and the course context, which is the, the day by day of teachers and students. So I choose to keep only these three contexts. There are other contexts, as you know, context user, context module, context block. Um, but probably they were too, too specific about what, to what I wanted to, to achieve. So I just kept these three contexts, system, course cat, and course. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, 
So gamification with this approach can happen in any of these three contexts. So if you see the graph there, you see that there's a bottom-up hierarchy, meaning that the lower context has greatest priority over the others. So if a game instance is set in the course context, it will not be affected by the course cut or the system context. But if the course context uh, chooses to inherit the game instance from the higher context, it can also be done because of the inheritance uh, property of the, of the game instance. Um, so this is where the action happens. So any points a user gets will be linked to the context, to, to the game instance or, uh, of the context where the action happens. Yep. OK, so uh, how do we define that? Really simple. Uh, we just, when, when, when the game instance is triggered, we check the context level. We see if it's system, course cut, or course. If it's other, we try to get the parent context. There's actually a function in Moodle, a method in Moodle called get parent context. So we try to get the parent context, and we go again. So if it's, system, if it's course cut or course, we check if it's inheriting the game instance from the higher content, or if it has its own uh, game instance. So if it inherits, we go back and check the parent context. But if not, we, 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 follow, we follow up. Same for, in, for our system. And the final check that we would do if uh, the, the gamification is disabled, because of course, you can choose to disable gamification in a lower context or in a higher context. Uh, we just finish, but if not, well, we enable gamification for that context, and then any action that happens will be counted to the, um, to the gamification instance, yeah? Okay, so for that, I created two um, classes. The game manager is not a factory class, it's more or less, it's a singleton actually that handles the construction, destruction, and management of the instances. It also handles the context uh, checking that we have seen just now. And also I created the game class, which is, uh, there's one for each of the, of the instances, uh, which contains the, the methods, the, the core API, if you, uh, API if, you want to, um, if you want to call it like that way, and the properties for the current game instance. Uh, so some methods that includes, but not limited, uh, get points of the user in that game instance, add points to that user, subtract points from that user, because maybe you want to subtract points from a user, and reset the, the whole game instance for, for, a, for a user. So um, one of the first things I did is create uh, global settings. Um, the pieces of code that you, you, you will see in the, in the presentation, they are just structs. They are not the whole file, so if you copy this, it won't work directly. They are just fragments from the, from the file. So the first thing I did is create a, a settings PHP for the module. Uh, in this case, I forgot to tell that my first approach was to do a local plugin instead of a core gamification subsystem. So I started with a, with a local um, plugin. Many of the, of the uh, functions, component, methods that I'm showing will work either way with, uh, as a subsystem, but bear in mind that some of the things you'll see here are just for local modules or any kind of modules. So in this case, the settings PHP for the, um, for the gamification subsystem, it allows enabling or disabling gamification for the whole site. It uh, allows to enable the, the global game instance in, in context system, so you, you may have the uh, gamification enabled for the site, but you don't want the whole site to, to play. Okay, so you can, it's two different states. And finally, uh, the set defaults for local settings. So uh, for example, if you add a new event, I will talk about that later, in a lower context uh, instance, so how many points, by default, it will uh, award uh, a certain action, okay? So also, local settings for the, for the context itself, uh, especially when dealing with a course, the course can be uh, any course or the site uh, course. So there will be users with the right capabilities that, could, uh, that will be able to manage each of the game instances. So um, 
in the three contexts, system, course cat, and course. Um, so what I wanted to do was to extend the settings of the course, of the course category, or whenever. Five minutes, okay. Ah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fall a little short. <laughs> So uh, what I found, there's no standard, there's no standard functions to, um, to um, uh, extend the settings. So I, I tried different things, like modifying directly the edit form and the edit category form. I, I didn't want to do that. I tried to develop the course standard elements and course category standard element hooks. And I tried to implement the custom fields API. But what I ended up doing was just uh, extending the navigation and creating a static page with the local settings. And what can anyone do in the local setting? So they can disable the gamification for that context. So maybe the gamification is enabled for the whole site, but you don't want it in a certain course. Um, maybe you want to inherit it from a parent context, or you want it a, 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 an instance for just that course. Okay? I'm going to rush it a bit, sorry. So that's how I extended it. Uh, actually, that's a mock-up, since I haven't found a way to put it right there with Moodle 4.0, but I'll try my best. Uh, so capabilities, I declared some capabilities, so like manage game instances, participate, uh, view the points for other users, add points and remove points, really simple actually. And so how, this is the important part, how can a user obtain points? So different ways, when an action is carried out, events, when an activity or a course has been completed, completion, when another user awards them, I mean manual, and when an action is carried out on an external application or service, for example. So, um, if you were yesterday on the uh, hackathon, I talk about event and event observers. It's mainly my, my, my whole work nowadays. Um, so what I did was to create an, another singleton, event manager, which handles the uh, event filtering. Um, it has a method that is based in an existing method for the uh, event list report from core. It just filters some kind, some events that will be uh, observed by the gamification plugin. Uh, I, I just used the level participating and the level teaching events, um, and I excluded the completions since they are they belong to another process. Okay. Um, Okay, so what we do, uh, so what I do is uh, using Event Manager, I get the list of all events and I create an observer for all of them. So creating an observer is just uh, declaring a variable in dv uh, slash events.php. Uh, and what I did is a simple hacky way. I, I, I loop through the list of events and I declare an observer for each one of them. So what is happening here is all of the filtered events are being triggered, uh, but they are all uh, getting, getting, getting back to a, to a common callback, which is tracked events. Uh, of course, beware of observers, both for performance and because they are catch. They, they are in the catch, so really, really, be really careful when working with, with events. Okay, and then among all of that list, the user with capabilities can filter which of these events they won and how many points they, they can achieve. They do that in the local settings that we have seen before. Uh, and, and they can, uh, they need to set this, the event name, the points that it gives, and the maximum frequency. For example, one time every two weeks, th uh, 10 times a day. So for example, if you are tracking form post event, uh, okay, you can achieve, you can get points uh, for a maximum of 10, pon, 10, po, 10, 10 posts a day, yeah? Um, okay, uh, important here, I didn't want to use the, um, the standard log table, so I created a different table because of performance issues, but I'm still thinking about the best way to do that. Really, really quick, uh, for completion, there's a separate observer, so we observe them when in a an activity or a course has been completed that has a different set of points. It's not, uh, it's not, um, it's apart from the, from the rest of the events. Uh, okay, so you can see here that I added a uh, gamification section to the activity settings. Uh, so manual giveaway, a teacher can 
uh, give points to, uh, well, as a user with capabilities can give points to another user, but I haven't implemented this yet. And finally, there's a whole set of um, external uh, API functions that allow uh, an external system to give points to the game instance. Um, so these points are, are tagged as external. And I don't know, an, an, an example, so if I created a game in Unity, this is a mockup, of course, I can call the local game at points in Moodle, and the points will go to the, uh, to the, to the game instance. Uh, this is the model. I, I, I won't speak about it. Um, OK, and just to finish, but to switch to a core subsystem, because I already told you that this is a local plugin by now, uh, there's some, of course, some things that need to be done. The first one is that the game folder should be at the root directory. Then you have to declare some, uh, the core subsystem and the sub plugin definition, because I, I haven't told that, but it allows sub plugins in the lib components JSON. Many of the callbacks that I have shown you can be done in a more direct way. Um, and well, I was gonna tell you some examples of sub plugins, but we are out of time, so maybe in another moment. Um, that's all. Uh, the game will be, the, the game, no, the plugin, when it's more or less ready, will be uh, available at that uh, link. Also, the sub plugins, but again, they won't be ready for production. So if you try them in a development setting, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for Salvador? Over there. Uh, thanks for that. Um, personally, I'm a huge fan about Moodle and gaming. Um, any plan about embedding VR or AR or like including VR and AR in gamification in Moodle? Uh, yes, sorry, VR? Yeah. Uh, VR and AR, virtual reality and um, augmented reality. Any plan about in embedding those one with gamification? I'm thinking about Pokemon Go, for example. Any chance we can embed like the same concept with like um, in, in, in Buddha with gaming? Well, uh, sorry, I, I don't get the question. It's like uh, ex like a plain extended reality or, or uh, augmented reality. Yeah. Um, I haven't thought about it. I mean, it was not the scope. Uh, hope so someday, because in my head there's these virtual walls, uh, like a persistent walls, using Moodle as an, an, a repository for for activity for grades and stuff. But of course, not, not in my plans actually. But since uh, this plugin has an external library, uh, it's really easy to implement from from any external service, may it be another web application, may it be a video, game, a video game, may it be a phone application with augmented reality capabilities. So, uh, yeah, no, cool. not on my plans, but achievable, yeah. Cool, thank you. Cool. Any other questions on the side? Thank you. Hi. Thanks a lot, this was very interesting. Um, maybe I didn't get it um, completely, so I'm just uh, gonna ask maybe a dumb question, but how did you imagine the points to be shown to the end user? Like in what way is the experience like uh, going forward? Yeah. Okay, that, that's a thing that I haven't mentioned yet, but the, since this is a work in progress, there's no uh, front end yet. So. <laughs> how do you imagine it? How do I? How do you imagine it? Oh, how do I imagine it? Yeah. Um, actually, actually, I had some mockups at home. Uh, one of the first thing was uh, uh, like this banner on the user profile saying, "Okay, you have this many points in the in, in the game instance." But also, um, since one of the sub -plug not sub plugins, but uh, one of the plugins in the ecosystem is a block, it's block. Uh, well, I, I can I can use block game because it's already being used, but block whatever. Um, I, I imagine them like entering there and seeing, having an option like, uh, I don't know, my, my game, my, my game stats, something like that, and then seeing their, their uh, points. Remember that this is just the smallest feature ever, so 
if you wanted anything else like a leaderboard or like a, I don't know competition between users or stuff that needs to be developed apart. And, and actually, it's one of the experiments that I made. I have this um, leaderboard plugin which just orders the the uh, users buy points on the game instance and show it to the user in a in a block. So, yep. Uh, hi. Hi. So, uh, thank you for, for your presentation. Uh, would you like to, to try uh, this uh, plugin with the Mozilla Hubs, uh, for example? Why not? Well, <laughs> you, you made my day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, my first option was uh, develop something in Unity or stuff, but I mm -hmm. mean, existing platforms or, or virtual worlds. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Okay. Um, I, I haven't, of course, not yet, but I will be really willing to. Okay, but, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, search for you now. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Hi, you mentioned like users are going to get their own points. And I'm afraid like uh, the future is going towards like more collaborative ways. Like, is there something in your mind where, like, a group of users yeah. work towards a goal? Um, actually, one of the sub-plugins that I imagined was this game team. It's like uh, dropping people uh, depending on many criteria. Like, for example, if this is in the system context, the, there will be groups like the course categories. If this, it's in the course category, maybe the courses. And if it's a course, maybe using groups. So that way, um, they, they will be able to earn points not only from their, for themselves, but also for the team. But when I was developing this experiment, I had to stop and think, because there are many concerns about, for example, equity. So how does everyone uh, get the same possibilities like the other if, for example, a group is has a, num a higher number of students than the other group? Uh, what if not everybody has the time? So um, it, it can become really fast, unfair to some people. So it's something that needs to be um, uh, made really quick. It, it happens the same for the competitive version, of course. But if you're facing a great number of people, the, the problem, it just multiplies. So. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I imagine like, like this, uh, I don't know, a course using groups and these groups cooperating between themselves and competing with each other, for example. Again, this is game mentality, so winning is all, always there, but we can find a way that winning, winning, like uh, getting the maximum number of points, it's not the high end. We, we, need, we can find something else to do with the points. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, I was wondering uh, if there was some other gamification plugin that wanted to add points back into your system. Would they use the uh, web services that you provided? That for the external, is that the best way to? Actually, there's a, a whole library of, uh, of, of functions, like a core <laughs> API. So if it's an, another plugin, you don't, you don't need to use external web services. You can use the, the, this plugin, this component and library. Um, uh, you, 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 I haven't thought, I haven't really thought about it. it <laughs> it's difficult because you need to declare the game instance first from your plugin. So there's a lot of logic that doesn't belong to the other plugin, but for the, for the gamification plugin. So I don't think it's ready yet for something like that, but the idea is, just that, that other plugins can implement this subsystem for anything, for giving points, maybe uh, tagging it with a, a, a custom tag instead of uh, an event name or a completion activity or something like that, but not in the current state, no. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you, that's super interesting. Um, just uh, my question, because I come from the UNESCO world and working with uh, officials and ministers and all that. 
gamification is a, a big no-no or a bit of a taboo and uh, people don't want to talk about um, um, competitiveness and, you know, bringing this into the world. So I'm always thinking how to use this, not as a winning, not as a competition, but to feed back to the learning experience. And I want to ask if you have thought of a way, because I can see that, for example, it's a capability to restrict access to resources or maybe give access to more resources based on on the leaderboard or whatever you're progressing, but I'm thinking how to help and feedback to the learners and help them maintain, for example, their engagement in a way that is not necessarily competitive. Like I'm thinking um, of applications, maybe I don't name them, but uh, that tell you like, oh, you're in this category, which means that you are progressing or if you drop a category, it means like, like I don't know, 30% of the learners being here. Like, basically feeding back and giving information on their experience and their learning rather than how they're doing compared to others or if there is anything there about that. Thank you. Um, actually, at Funever, some years ago, we had this project that get nowhere, got nowhere because we hadn't had the time or the resources. We wanted to do something like this, like not points, but something else. Uh, so the, the most active users, for example, the, 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 the users that um, take the most time on the platform, because remember, this is for engaging the platform, not, not really the learning process itself. Uh, we wanted to, to convert them to, uh, to, to, or to make them like some kind of big brothers and sisters, like um, uh, no, no, not in a competitive way, like saying, okay, this is the people that knows more about the course, that uh, interacts most with each other, something like that, so they can be used as a reference for the rest of the users to ask questions, to whatever. Uh, it's the farther I think we, we, we at Funiver at least have thought of something like that. But again, um, the, I, I have to confess, the idea for this was really competitive. So. Um, uh, not, not on the initial scope, but again, uh, this is a work in progress. I don't think it will be ready soon. So if anyone from wherever can make or wants to make any suggestion, they are all welcome. And we can even work together to achieve something like that. Yep. My question is, because I'm trying, does competitive work and in, if so in what settings because in our case like a bit of research that we did showed that it didn't so we dropped it but is there any specific sector area have you tested it and so that it actually like improved engagement or really worked for the learners or there is no data on this um, I don't have any testing data right now um, the first sample group we wanted to uh, to apply it to was a university in Spain in Santander which is part of our network and we wanted to apply it to uh, to the extent of the whole academic year as an as a transversal activity as a transversal project for the uh, remember a university so a higher education uh, course but mm, I don't have any data right now because it's it's I mean it's 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 not even finished so no, I'm sorry. <laughs>